Good morning. Welcome to the Born Katamit West Falmouth United Methodist Church online service. We are so delighted that you have joined us today. Please join as the liturgist reads and read the dark print and sing along with Tatiana as she plays the piano with her beautiful hymns. We are all, all our three churches are meeting inside now. West Falmouth at 8.30, Katamit at 10, and Bourne at 11.30. But we are continuing to offer this online service uh, so that those of you that are not able to come to church will still be able to join us. So we're so happy that you're watching us online today. I wish God's blessings to you and have a good week. Thank you. Psalm today is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For God has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully, they will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord, who seek the face of God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord is the ruler of glory. Amen.
please join me in the unison prayer. Holy God, you who breathe life into us and call us good, you who call us by name and know everything about us, open our hearts and minds that we may hear your voice, that we may answer your call to love the world as you do, to build relationship with all the earth in holiness and peace. Amen. We listen for God's word from the Gospel of Mark 6, verses 14 to 29. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him, in Jesus. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like the one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and a holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he really liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? And her mother replied, the head of John the baptizer. Well, immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. So immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard and orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother, Herodias. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The word of the Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, the creator of all that is. For the past two weeks, Mark's gospel has recounted stories of Jesus healing people and then sending the disciples out two by two to do the same. Today's scripture begins by saying that Herod heard about Jesus' ability to heal and thought that he was John the Baptist, raised from the dead. King Herod would be very afraid of the resurrection of John the Baptist because he was responsible for his death. And so Mark tells us why. This story is gruesome and troubling and has been inspiration for much art and drama. It is the story of a birthday party gone wrong. King Herod had sent men to arrest John the Baptist and to put him in jail on account of his brother Philip's wife, Herodias. King Herod was having an affair with Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and John the Baptist had had the nerve to broach the topic of adultery with the king, and Herodias was furious. But King Herod recognized John as a holy man, and he loved to listen to him, even though his words made him feel miserable 
and guilty. He knew John was a righteous man, and he protected him, even though he did as Herodias wanted and had him arrested. But then there is the birthday party. Oh my, can you imagine what kind of a party King Herod throws? Guests and lavish food and wine and entertainment. The highlight of the evening, apparently, was when Herodias' daughter Salome shared her special gifts. Scripture doesn't identify her by name. We know this detail from historian Flavius Josephus. But Salome is famous or infamous, having been the subject of many paintings and drama and opera. Apparently, Salome did a very special dance. In Strauss's opera, it's the Dance of the Seven Veils. Think Gypsy Rose Lee in the Middle East, which pleased the king and his guests very much. And so giddy with delight was King Herod with young Salome that he offered her anything at all she would like as a gift, up to half of his kingdom. And she consulted her mother, Herodias. Mom, what should I ask for? And Herodias, still seething with the sting of criticism for her adultery with the king, said, ask for the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Now Herod is stuck because he does not wish to do John harm. But he has said to Salome that she can have anything up to half his kingdom and he can't go back on his word. He can't lose face in front of his guests. This is the Middle East and honor and shame are the foundation of how everything works. John the Baptist's death is preferable to losing face. So this is the backstory for today's reading. Our scripture begins with words about Jesus' fame, teaching and healing in the area. And people are saying, he's Elijah. He's a prophet like the prophets of old. And Herod says, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. Herod, apparently, believes in resurrection. Just when we are really ready to hate this King Herod and to paint him as the quintessential villain, we have this annoying realization that he's not completely beyond hope. He recognized John as a holy man and sought his counsel, painful though that was, and agonized about having him beheaded. Much like Pilate, who would find nothing in Jesus worthy of death, Herod had thrown John in jail to placate others, and then things got out of control. But we humans prefer things to be more one-dimensional, all villain or all good guy. We like to think people who act badly are all bad. People who seem good must be all good. But the whole mess and mystery in life is that the good stuff is mixed up with the bad stuff. The good people sometimes do bad things, and the bad people can also do good things. And so we have trouble with leaders or celebrities when they end up having feet of clay, and we don't know what to do with someone that we've judged as evil when they surprise us with their humanity. Because although we want people to be all good or all bad, they aren't. And we want all things to likewise be all good or all bad, and they also aren't. Medicine has saved many lives, but drug addiction is a plague. Alcoholism is a huge problem for many, but changing water into wine was Jesus' first miracle. And part of his instructions to us involve remembering him when we drink it and break bread together. It is always our work to try and sort it out. The notion of forgiveness is implicit in all this conversation. Exploring what forgiveness is, is really a life's work. It isn't pretending that bad things haven't happened. 
and it isn't allowing people to hurt us over and over again. Loving, compassion, and forgiveness are moving targets, and rightly so. It's not something we do once. You can't do it once and cross it off. It's a way of being in the world, a way of seeing, and a way of living. Herod's birthday party did not go well. It is clear from our scripture that he was unhappy, regretful, and that he believed when Jesus appeared performing miracles and healing the sick, that it was in fact John the Baptist whom he killed, now raised from the dead. We can never know what that thought did to Herod. If John was resurrected and returned to heal people, what would the implications of that be? And what might it mean to Herod? Would Herod be in trouble with a risen John? Was he afraid of revenge? Or would a risen John convince Herod that he too might be resurrected from his sinful self, might be saved from himself and become godly? Was it, rather than being frightening, perhaps the best possible news? News that light is present in darkness, no matter how deep the darkness is that we have fallen into. We must be alert and ready ourselves to be the light in a world where people are hated because of their ethnicity, their skin color, their faith, or for no reason at all. How do we love in such a world? How do we bear the light of Christ when the darkness is so pervasive? We do not measure the dark and we do not count the cost of discipleship. We know to whom we belong. It is so tempting to rail against the wrong, to lash out, to blame and feed hostility and anger until it is the strongest emotion that we feel. But we did not learn Christ in this way. You may know the composer and singer Leonard Cohen for his song Hallelujah, which has become very popular in recent years. But he wrote another song called Anthem, which reminds us of some things that we need to know. It's worth listening to, hearing his rumbling, raspy, deep voice tell the story. The words go like this. The birds they sang at the break of day. Start again, I heard them say. Don't dwell on what has passed away or what is yet to be. Yeah, the wars, they will be fought again. The holy dove, she will be caught again, bought and sold and bought again. The dove is never free. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. We asked for signs, the signs were sent. The birth betrayed, the marriage spent. Yeah, the widowhood of every government, signs for all to see. I can't run no more with that lawless crowd while the killers in high places say their prayers out loud, but they've summoned up a thundercloud and they're gonna hear from me. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. You can add up the parts, you won't have the sum. You can strike up the march, there is no drum. Every heart, every heart to love will come, but like a refugee. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Somehow, God continues to work within whatever mess we've gotten ourselves into. 
and although our preference is usually to point at other people and name their flaws, we are not here to fix other people. We are here to allow the grace of God to transform us into the best possible version of ourselves, the people God intended us to be. And as we are transformed by love, our lives offer, offer hope to others. We receive love and learn to give it. Humility, forgiveness, reverence by grace. May it be so. Amen. In deep silence, in the presence of God and surrounded by friends, we quiet our hearts and still our minds to offer our prayers. O God of us all, prepare our hearts to listen and to be moved. Make us dare to open the desires of our hearts 
and may we all pray for the things we hold close. We pray for the concerns of our church family and community. Gracious God, through all the ways we can find to do things wrong, you keep holding onto us in love. No matter how faithless we are, you are faithful. Teach us to accept your forgiveness and to turn around, to repent, to stop doing what is wrong and to do what is right instead. And so we join together to pray the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now it is with glad and joyful hearts that we offer to God a portion of what we have. Our God is far greater than words can make known. Exalted and holy, he reigns on his throne. In infinite splendor, he rules over all. Yet he feeds the poor sparrow and he knows when they fall. His power is great and will ever endure. His wisdom is peaceable, gentle and pure. But greater than all of these glories I see is the glorious promise that he cares for me. The earth and the heavens are the work of his hands, and billions of angels obey his commands. He guides the great galaxies spinning through space. Yet he gave us his own son as a gift of God's grace. He rides the wild heavens, he strides through the seas. The high mountains tremble to hear his decrees. His voice with great thundering sound from above. But to his own children, he whispers his love. Prayer of Dedication. Please join me in reading our Prayer of Dedication. All blessings of life are from you, O Lord. Accept these gifts from our hearts and hands, which we offer in joy and gladness. 
May we always work to bless each other and to restore shalom to this beautiful, needful earth. Amen. Let us now go forth with prayer and singing. How firm a foundation, number 529 in the hymnal. So go forth in peace, protected by God's extravagant love. Remember always that you are a child of God and that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. When you find yourself surrounded by darkness, be the light. Honor and glorify God in every moment of your living. Amen. <laughs>